Okay, so whenever you're ready, let's start with chapter one, House of Pigza. We are rolling. I can't blame who I am on where I live, because who I am is how I live. I was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I was at the Buchanan School, the same school Joey Pigza goes to. And this kid was spinning around in his desk, I mean, just spinning around. And he was sort of scanning my brain. I would throw out sort of the first half of a sentence, kind of a jokish sentence, and boom, that kid would snap with the answer right there. And then suddenly his mood just sort of started going south, and then he started getting the teacher's attention, and then he just yelled out, teacher, teacher, I forgot to take my meds. She pointed to the door and just he burst out of that room and down the hall. and. I think my heart went down the hall with him. He was such a great kid. From that moment forward, I started working on the books and thinking about the books, and then I made a vast mistake. I started writing that book in the third person, and what happened is it became a sort of disease du jour book. It was just about ADHD, and it wasn't about the character, and so I flipped it into the first person, put it into Joey's voice, and now we can hear Joey's genius, Joey's jokes, Joey's cleverness. Joey's laughter. I was always influenced by, of course, the storytellers around me, my grandparents and people in my community. But then you bring that sort of richness of the oral storytelling to how you read on the inside of a book. You bring the voices of the inner ear and the dialogue from listening to your relatives and parents. Until my lips are clown crazy huge and can't stretch any wider without splitting open. After the first book, Joey Pigs has swallowed the key. It's when I first started getting letters from kids. And I would get two kinds of letters. I would get the letter from the kid that would go, how did you know I felt that way? And that would be the whole letter. Like, he was Joey all the way through. And it would be a kid in the same class going, we've read Joey Pigs has swallowed the key. Now we know what that other kid is like on the inside, and we're gonna give him another chance. Then teachers started using the book as a read aloud, because then everybody in the class could begin to associate with that Joey character. Audiobooks and boys are such a perfect matchup, because a lot of times what happens is boys really are listening while they're doing other things. So they might be in a classroom, say, with the book on, and the kids are running around from desk to desk, they're multitasking, they're doing many different things, and if the teacher goes, hmm, that boy's not listening to that book, and they turn it off and then quiz the boy, the boy will give them all the right answers. That kind of audiobook uh, causes boys to retain more, and it's a great learning tool for them. How's his level? I figure in a week, I'll have a thousand points. He's good. But after playing it, you have a good level I find the myself The challenging part heavily. is Watch you have to that. read out loud uh, perfectly, perfectly on, t on the text. And you still have to stay right on task totally. That's great, Jack. You're moving a little bit, so just uh, try to keep your hands down. Okay. Or maybe... It was very difficult to read that book, read any book, without wanting to reach for your own red pencil. When I finish a book, I really feel as though I've consumed all the junk that's in the book, and it should be pretty beautiful. But every now and again, when you're reading that book, boy, you would like to insert a word or a line, and you're just kind of thinking, how can I do that? But you can't, and sometimes I try to sneak a word in, but they catch it every time on the board. It is uh, emotionally draining, it is physically draining, but then once it's done, and then I come out, Oh, it's such a wonderful feeling. Well, I'll miss my little clubhouse. I'm very pleased to have written them all and to have thought of them. And creatively, it was really a big challenge. And also creatively, I felt that it was a challenge with great purpose because I like this character and I think there are a lot of kids out there that read Joey, see themselves in Joey, other people see themselves, of what Joey's made of. And so I think I've added something not just in the storytelling, but added something into the perception of somebody else's heart. The thing that's great about books is that they don't really go away. So once the book is written, every time you read it, you can still draw the same emotion out sure. of it. Every time another kid reads it, they can still draw everything out of it. So I may have finished, but the book lives on.